All right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. <laughs> I apologize, everybody. We 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 tried to do a a test earlier, and it uh, worked on its own. But of course, things got uh, muted. So I apologize. Anyway, welcome. Uh, that's the nature of technology sometimes, as I adjust my microphone here. I apologize for the noise. Um, what was I saying? It's been, it's been a while. Um, I actually don't remember the last time I've had a, a live stream with the, with the channel here. Um, honestly, I think the kindest thing that I can say about what's been going on is that we just got really busy, you know? And, uh, you know, COVID, uh, now we're demonetized. Not that we need it, but... I don't even think we've got the ad revenue for this channel anyway. Um, yeah, things have, things have changed quite a bit. Um, I was reviewing um, some of the earlier live streams that we were doing for the Learn SQL series uh, when I started back in March of uh, this year. And I think the first things I said was, uh, hey, we just went into lockdown, so we're going to be in this room for a while. And that hasn't changed. Uh, in fact, what has changed is uh, the heat um, this office, this home office gets really, really hot. And I've even gotten to the level of putting aluminum foil on my windows just to reduce the heat level in this room. Cause I've got a desktop, I've got a laptop, I've got a huge monitor going and, uh, yeah, anyway, so things have been different. Things have been interesting. Um, we've been, uh, definitely, uh, going through our own challenges with our customer. Uh, in fact, I've even heard, um, you know, timely for the news, uh, today's September 11th. So, I want to make sure that we are uh, cognizant of that fact, a, a big part of our national history. Uh, but also, we've, we've got a lot of other things going on now. I just got uh, a message from a client saying that uh, their warehouse burnt down out there in Oregon. And uh, my heart goes out to them um, that things are not easy. Um, uh, you know, things kind of the world's kicking our butt. But um, I. I'm a positive person. I like to be optimistic, uh, and uh, we're just going to continue with the, the best way we can by uh, being who we are, helping people out, and that's kind of the reasons why we're here on this channel to to teach people uh, publicly what what we know, what we can do, um, and and yeah. So we're we're let's let's get into it. Um, welcome to season two. Uh, what this uh, Learn SQL series season two is about is we're going to be teaching you uh, the uh, how to use the SQL language within Fishbowl Inventory. And that's one of the things that I think most, not even Fishbowl themselves, um, really uh, talk about it too much because it's kind of like, hey, we have it there. If you know how to use it, go for it. But they're not going to just um, put out this kind of content. And I've been working on the Fishbowl platform for a number of years, uh, almost too many years. Uh, I legit had fishbowl dreams <laughs> or sql dreams as well um but um what you'll learn so that's that so we're going to go through we're going to take a single student um in this case i've got a new student and i'll talk about her here in a minute and uh so what we're going to be learning is you know just the, the the sql basics for fishbowl uh navigating the fishbowl database uh developing your own queries maybe even uh we'll troubleshoot and um suss out some ideas from other queries because uh, you know it's a, it's a very that's a language that I think you can learn from other people quite a bit on what you've done before. Um, and that's how I learned a lot in the past is just following other people's advice or following other people's queries left behind by uh, other people. And then we'll talk about uh, the SQL query tools and then we'll talk about third party tools and so on and so forth. We're not going to cover a lot of that in this uh, particular episode uh, stream. It'll probably take a few sessions and then I'd like to actually if we can get to the end, uh, I know we'll get to the end. It'll just take time. Uh, I'd like to actually start switching over the stream into the other things you can do with SQL, like uh, writing reports, right? That's been always a big bugaboo for Fishbowl uh, for the 10 years I've been on the platform, reports, reports, reports. And the different ways you can develop a report, the different ways you can uh, organize data for reports or visualize it other third-party tools like Power BI, Tableau, that sort of thing. Um, so those are the sort of things that I'd like to for people to get excited about to stay with the channel, uh, learn with it. And the, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, about but this particular season is why did we restart? Well, we restarted because uh, in Fishbowl 2020.5, the, the last video on this channel, uh, talked about some of the custom field changes uh, related to it. And it's been some time. You know, that came out in May. And um, 
we've had a better, uh, us, ILC as a company, have a better understanding of what those custom field changes look like. Uh, we're not going to go through that today, uh, but it is um, going to be something we're going to talk about because it does uh, change the nature of the query. So if you're on Fishbowl 2020.3 and prior, then go look at the other SQL uh, uh, series, the other session, and uh, go through that. And then when you're ready to maybe consider 2020.5, uh, go ahead and then come back to this channel and learn again. Some of it might be interesting. Uh, I do encourage you guys to uh, you know, go through the new session because, you know, when we have a new student, um, it's uh, a lot, you know, I as a, as a, as the teacher here will learn a bit different on how to approach certain things, how to explain things a bit differently. Uh, and it's always a different kind of case. I don't think every teacher would say that every class or, or season or, or even year of students are going to be the same. Uh, everyone uh, can teach one thing after another, something new for everybody. Anyway, so let's uh, introduce the new student, um, Alexa. Yes. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Super excited. You excited? This is your first. I think this is your first live stream ever. This is my first live stream ever. I was thinking before we started that my sisters would be so proud of me right now because they're they're the kind of people who live stream and it just is so funny. I just kept reminding myself like, ah, oh, they would be so excited for me right now. Awesome. Awesome. So I've, I've been doing this for a while. Um, it, well, I wouldn't say a while. Um, it, it's, it's always interesting. You'll, you'll get through the jitters. It, it's always, it's always great. Every, Every time you go on there, there's, there's even this morning, you know, I was struggling with, you know, USBs and, and Wi-Fi wi here at the house. And, and then my microphone wasn't working. And then all of a sudden, like the audio wasn't working uh, just a minute ago. So there's, and on top of that technology issue, you got to kind of get over the fact that it's just really just the two of us. You know, there might be some people in the chat today. Um, right. Hopefully we get some interaction from them. But yeah, it, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. I like doing it. And we, when, um, so let me explain a little more about Alexa. Alexa's new to the company, right? And when um, and you might, as a client of ILC, you might actually be interacting with Alexa. Uh, she's more of our um, manager that's going to be handling engagements. But we won't talk about that too much now. Um, we might talk about that later. Um, but uh, one of the things that we talked about th that would be that she wanted to do as part of you know working with ILC is. Uh, she really wanted to learn SQL, right? So why don't you talk a little bit about that, um, some of your background, um, some of your history with me, and what you maybe are looking to do with this live stream. Yeah, so, uh, you know, at my previous job, um, we worked with Fishbowl, and I, I mean, I was in and out of it daily for many years, uh, and it was one of those where every time that you came in and started writing some queries, I just would be so amazed and enthralled and just like absorbed into watching over your shoulder to see you just create these queries. We'd be talking about something, and two seconds later, you're like, oh, do you mean this? And um, it was just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, now can I see that? Like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And just watching and trying to connect the dots. Um, and so obviously like, you know, that's one reason that kind of pushed me into uh, wanting to learn a bit more about this. But um, I also went through uh, in grad school, I took a data analytics course. And, you know, in that course, we were taking business problems and solving them using Stata and R, which I know it's, you know, kind of a whole different ball game, but still, you know, you have to write something and it generates an answer essentially, or it generates something for you to use and take and analyze and take it the next step further. Um, and so in part of that, it was just, I don't know, something about data and using data, manipulating it and, uh, you know, taking it to analyze and go to the next level is the kind of thing that just really, um, drives me. It excites me and makes me want to do more with it. So, uh, you know, this past year as a gift to myself for Christmas, I uh, took, uh, I signed up for some courses to learn about Python and then went, oh, hey, you know what? I should learn a little bit about SQL, right? It's, you know, it's entangled with Fishbowl and like we can kind of take that and go further. And then I started talking to you and it was like, yes, let's make this a great thing, right? Let's take this and make it grow. So, uh, you know, that's kind of 
I guess that's the that's the background to it. Um, but it's just one of those where also in in helping you out, I think that understanding the background of things and how things work and tick helps me uh, help you better. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that we talked about previously is uh, the Israelisms or the the analogies oh, yeah. that I come to I come to uh, pass, and um, one of the things that I I'm realizing now as I kind of just go off the cuff is, you know, you don't really know, uh, you know, to the point about, you know, when you know more about the background, you more, you more know about the, the nuts and bolts, you, you kind of appreciate it a bit more. Um, yeah. I, for one, like, I'm, I'm just kind of reminding myself now, like uh, an industry or a background that I just, I don't think I'd ever really appreciate uh, weddings and wedding planning. Right. <laughs> uh, I got married last year. Right. Um, yep. And I, I just never put a thought to it. It wasn't a, a negative thing. It wasn't a positive thing. But going through the wedding and um, kind of understanding more about our wedding planner's uh, role and what she was doing and um, being part of the event, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> uh, I had a lot to worry about. I had a lot right. to think about. You know, it's it's already a stressful thing. Yeah. But uh, you know, just kind of looking back, even now, um, to just you know, the, the, just having knowledge of the background. Mm-hmm. It makes me appreciate that uh, industry and that role a bit more. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like that's kind of similar to maybe how you as a customer, because remember, Alexa was a customer of mine. She'd be the person that I'd be interacting with at my client's offices where uh, I'd show up and we'd try to figure things out and put a put a plan to the day. And um, now that she's on this side, I think she's going to understand a bit more. You're going to understand a bit more of how um what it really takes to kind of like put put a report together put a piece of software together oh and, yeah um, <laughs> we, we've been talking previously how do we how do we explain to customers the the nature of of the technology decisions and, and who's responsible for what and what kind of ground rules there are for uh interaction you know um, right yeah, you know. I mean, from the customer side, it's just magic, right? Yep, I ask exactly. for something and you guys just make it happen, right? And I right. just remember thinking about that and now looking back at some of those, uh, you know, thoughts or crazy ideas I had. And I remember always telling you, like, Israel, I think I have a crazy idea, uh, but I'm going to run it by you, right? Yeah, and right. Uh, But understanding now, like, okay, yeah, these sometimes it's a crazy idea and it just requires more work on the back end. And sometimes there's just things that can't happen. Um, or not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah. Is a Usually great it's a way not to yet. say it. It's a not yet not because yet. we're not there yet, but we can get there. Right. Um, and so that, I yeah, no, it's been uh, to have both sides of the coin now to be able to see it is great. It's just one of those, I think it helps uh, develop that full picture. And that's, and that's why I really wanted to do this. Uh, I thought that's why I thought this having this kind of uh, this episode, not episode, but this effort, right. Of kind of going through that now. Cause you know, what, what, what am I going to do? Like take the, put the, uh, put the Joker back in the box, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> like there's, there's that, uh, excitement and awe that happens that only happens once right you know so i i hope to kind of capture a, a little bit of that um through these different sessions and different seasons um of of of, of this uh this particular uh, effort and um you know put that on video share that with others um be able to uh for for me personally like i, I i'm a pretty progressive guy myself um and um i just want to see people that uh, have the, the, the aptitude and the, 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 the desire to learn something like SQL, uh, and not feel like they're, there's a reason why they can't be, you know? Right. Um, yeah. that's why I'm really thankful that you're part of this, this session and, uh, we'll be, we'll be going on the journey together. So, oh. um, before we start, um, and I, and I want to ask, I think you hinted on it a little bit. Um, I want to ask you what, what do you want to get the most out of this, opportunity uh well i mean i guess at the end of the day i like to take the data and then make a decision off of it um or you know move it further which i'm not quite sure if that's going to answer your question entirely but one of my uh aha moments was watching you take data from fishbowl and put it into power bi 
and make it into like a visual right? right something that's easy for everyone to digest um in that or you know just a quick look then they can get the picture uh so you know that's one of my primary motivating factors i guess is to be able to do that but um you know just understanding how much is really there and how much uh goes on behind the scenes i guess uh, sure. Sure. in creating these right. reports or in creating these queries to take it to the next level awesome yeah okay awesome well that let's uh with that uh let's get started let me put on my professor hat a little bit here and switch to the switch to the live stream to my, my desktop here and i'm going to ask you alexa yes have you done your homework <laughs> we were joking on, about this. <laughs> we were joking about this. Earlier. You know, the nerd in me, of course, did my homework. <laughs> well, I, go ahead. I, I just, I keep flashing back to the conversation we had when we were planning this and me asking you like, Israel, what can I do to prepare? And you're like, what do you mean? Do you show up to the first day of class with your homework done already? And I just started laughing like, <laughs> well, of course I show up prepared on the first day. I'm that person that reads the first chapter or reads the syllabus or whatever yeah. and just cracking up about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I did a little bit of homework. I, I, Obviously, I don't know how to do it all, but I did some homework and I found some really funny videos. And uh, yeah, I, I did yeah, a little let, bit of homework. Let's talk a little bit about that. Do you want to talk about the Lego video? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's talk about uh, that. I was trying to find a video you sent me, right? But then I stumbled upon this video here um, where she's pretty much teaching what is SQL, but from a super simple level that I think even my three year old nephew could understand. Uh, because there's Legos involved, but pretty much she takes Legos and says, okay, uh, so let's imagine that this is data and these are, you know, the, the databases and this is the warehouse and uh, you need to talk to the warehouse, right? And so, uh, you know, do we, or you need to extract the data. Do you build a store and do all this stuff or do you get Sally SQL, which is the person, the, the character in black clothing right there. Do you get Sally SQL who knows how to speak the language and speak your language and can bring it back to you? So you say, here, Sally SQL, I need, right? And so she, like in this example, she's giving the, uh, the names of people who are more than three centimeters tall. Right. Uh, and so, you know, it was just something that <laughs> it really made it kind of click. And I, I laughed, but um, it just is something that makes it so relational. I mean, this is in a nutshell, like the kind of stuff that I would do, right? And that it's like me taking information, putting it in Power BI so someone else can understand it. There's right? a, there's a, there's a, this is an interesting thing. And I, and I, and I want to bring this up. There's a, um, on YouTube, there is, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Billy Speaks. And it's about this cat that, um, is learning language by just repeating the sounds that their, uh, uh parents are making. And, yeah. um, it's it's able to kind of understand like the pet sound means oh if I hit this button I'll get pets if right. I hit this button I'll get food if I hit yep. this if I hit this button they'll understand that I'm upset or I want to go outside or whatever um, and it's hilarious it's absolutely hilarious but uh, I don't know we're getting ads oh, oh whatever. yay it's yeah, that ads. time of year it's that time of year <laughs> and I'm not signed in I I, I actually have a YouTube Premium so I would have gotten yeah. the ads anyway. But um, no, it's fun. Be it's it's funny because it's the cat doesn't understand language, right? But it understands sounds, right? Mm -hmm. And it can understand that there is a relation to, to a sound to this, and and then we can build with that. And I think that people and I and, know, and I don't know this person. I don't know this YouTuber. Um, uh, this video went up last year. It doesn't look like they're putting up too many videos now, but um, I think it's great. Um, that's why I spent a lot of time. Um, you know, making analogies and you, it's actually rubbed off on you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> because we have to, we have to explain a very technical thing to people that are not that technical so we can build, um, build trust. And, right. um, what ends up happening is like, we just kind of have to go to, to something that is a lot more tactile, a lot more, a lot more, uh, I guess just approachable. Mm -hmm. And then kind of say, okay, here's the bridge to that idea, to that concept. And yeah. then we can go from there. Uh, another one of those, um, kind of, uh, 
you know, fun content kind of uh, things that I've, I've mentioned before um, is this uh, manga guide to databases. And they have some other content as well. They have like a manga guide to linear algebra, statistics, microprocessors. And I've bought and given out these books uh, in, the, in the past. And it's it's a fun thing because because people that are just not, they don't understand that. Like, for example, like, when you when people may have complained in school about like when am I ever gonna learn use this? Yeah, I well, remember actually, about algebra. <laughs> well, yeah, li- maybe not linear algebra, but you know you're gonna you're gonna need to learn how to crunch data f- more faster than you can on a piece of paper. Right. Right. People don't remember that. It's like you know you're 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 gonna like even if you go into construction, you're gonna have report. I mean, apart from the no, even then. There's 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 math and things that people on the construction site do that I don't understand like carpenters oh, yeah. like they yeah. have a ma- a mental math for the angles and the cut points and things like that that I've seen in, in other YouTube channels as they do like I don't know we're building a barn and they're just mm-hmm. they're just they're just they don't have a they have a plan but they don't have like exact cut points they're just making them based on uh, experience with like okay well if we're gonna do a 45 degree angle then we got to cut it here, here, and here. And, and then right. it's perfect, you know? Yeah. So there's a practicality to the math. Um, but when you're dealing with um, data that represents maybe, you know, producing how many yards of, of uh, metric um, linear board feet of material do we need for building 20 barns or not even barns, just houses, right? And you're dealing with data. Where's that? Where's that going? Where's that going on? So... Mm-hmm. This particular book, uh, as I mentioned about it, is uh, basically you know you're managing a kingdom, and there's a lot of data with that kingdom, a lot of paperwork with that kingdom. So what's going on where, and how do we figure that out? And it's great. It is very very approachable to explain why databases and SQL as a tool to to uh, to interact with it is so much more um, um, you know I guess I could say just it. it it's not. It's not by any means. It's not sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, but what it's a it's a means to an end, right? Right. Um, we could be writing SQL for humdrum things like oh gosh, I don't know. I think you can make an app for me. You probably make anything interesting to me. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're maybe you're you're by itself. You know, uh, rice, right? Maybe you've mm-hmm. got a, a company selling rice. It's not that interesting to you, but um, it might be interesting to somebody else, right? You could be having oh, a yeah. database selling cat toys. Again, not be not might not be interesting to everybody, but really interesting to, to certain people. Uh, you yeah. could be selling. Oh my gosh! Like we, I was just thinking about this this morning. Like you know, vaccines. You know, that's mm-hmm. going to be huge. Um, you know, uh, supply chain logistics planning kind of effort. And I guarantee you, SQL is going to be used right before and after and during to manage uh, vaccine distribution for uh, COVID. Right. Yeah. So, um, so it's important. Now, one of the other books that I, that I, that I thought to share with the audience, uh, sequel for mere mortals here on mm-hmm. Amazon. Yeah. Sequel queries for, for mere mortals. I've heard about this book. Uh, I have not, uh, I'll be honest with you. I've not, uh, I've not gone through it a few times, uh, myself. I, I've, I've tried to, but you know, with life and work and things going on, I don't think I can see the insides of it. It doesn't um, look like they want you to preview. <laughs> they don't want to preview. <laughs> um, but it's it's a great it's a great textbook uh, kind of approach to it. Uh, I think one half is the queries, the other half is the data manipulation side, and we'll talk about that a bit more. But if you're looking for content, if you're looking for some background, um, uh, maybe start here, right? To just because I I don't have a textbook, <laughs> I don't, I can't I can't um, follow what? along uh, you know this book and not get some kind of copyright strike. So everything that I'm going off is just off of my uh, just being extemporaneous and and trying something new uh, off of my experience. Now the yeah. other thing that you can do is uh, that I th- that I actually did give you homework, um, Alexa, was the history of databases, right? Yep. And um, Tell me, what did you what did you learn as I as I hit the play button here? What did you learn about the history of databases? Uh, well, if I let's see if I can say this correctly, but it's more that the structure of data and being stored uh, has changed so much over time, and I think it has to do with the complexity of 
what everyone's trying to look for mm -hmm. and um you know being able to take massive amounts of data and crunch it real quick um yep. and you know I, I think it was what it in the 70s 80s it was really interesting they actually mentioned r in this and i didn't realize like just it tied in a lot of the the different um things that i've heard about but uh you know it, it, just being able to take data store it somewhere right and let's say like i don't know you want to know about movies and who was in the movie and how much money they made and right like i mean there could be millions of pieces of data in a table and right. to be able to take that and relate it to another something else right as long as there's something that matches between the two well then here we go now right. we can take it and we can um use it and analyze and so uh it just it was interesting to watch the structure and like uh they had those um those uh visuals where there was just like an arrow pointing from one to another right, right? and it was very singular right. at some point right. and then it started to become a little bit more complex so then it's like hey what do i do with this uh and so they had to find ways to be able to make it so everything is uh can handle more complex um questions let's say um or more complex queries i guess right because back in the day um and I'll, I'll i'll make a mention of this is that you know we you know a database wasn't much more than like what makes a file a cabinet a file a cabinet right rather than just a pile of paper yeah right? uh, what makes a file a cabinet is its structure right yep it makes mm -hmm. it you know they're you know i i can't get the camera on, i can't get it on the camera but i've got a file cabinet in a closet and yeah. it's let's be let's be honest i'll I'll be straight up it's not that organized but i have personal business other in right. there and right. within the business stuff i've got like taxes and uh, you know other than taxes <laughs> but within the taxes i've got years right so you can understand yep. that there's a hierarchy to that right yep which is fine and great when the hierarchy doesn't change right right but um as soon as uh, as soon as the hierarchy doesn't work anymore, here we go with the hierarchical model. Um, then it becomes really difficult. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes really difficult. You know, when we're looking at like here's a customer, here's their order history, here's their invoices, here's their payments. It works well when you're trying to minimize or that the path you take to that information is the same each time. Mm -hmm. Right. You got to remember that it's it's about the path you take to get there. Right. right. But. Uh, it becomes really, really difficult when you need to take another path, right? When, yep. you, when you need to say, like, give me all the outstanding payments, mm -hmm. you know? And with, with the hierarchical model, you have to go through each customer whether or not they have an outstanding payment or not. Right. You know? And mm -hmm. that's, that's where I was like, well, this whole database thing, it's a great idea, but um, it's really difficult to manage. And uh, the world is changing quite a bit, so... You know, why don't we go to more, uh, you know, relation? I'm trying to find that section here. Uh, maybe I can find it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Why don't we go to a more relational model, right? Where, you know, in this example, we've got you know a route which has a airline and a flight number associated with a to and from airport, mm -hmm. right? And how do we kind of like link that up together? Now we can ask questions of the data. Right. Right. We're not asking questions of the structure necessarily. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now we can now we have. A, and then how do we explain that? And that's where and how, how do we create a language for that? Right. Um, yeah. English. Um, uh, and, I, you know, I know Spanish and I know Japanese. All the, the grammatical structure is very interesting. For example, you know, in Japanese, they the the verbs are usually at the end. You know, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. There there is a dog or. In, in English, you'd say there is a dog, you know, the whole thing. Right. Um, in Japanese, you say ino ga arimas, you know, as like dog, there is, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Is that's that's how that's I mean I don't want to be I'm not flexing right. or anything, but that's the that's what um, that's kind of how the structure of that language is built up. And and right. for SQL, they had to figure out it's like okay, what are we gonna talk about, and then how are we gonna relate information that already exists there into a new format. Right. Mm -hmm. Take the structure out necessarily of of how we're storing it, but allow the person that wants that information to, to extract it out of the database to provide the structure 
so that we can correlate things together. And one of the other things that, um, uh, and we'll move on, and we'll actually get to, to actual fishbowl here that I wanted to explain and make sure we had a good basis for understanding is that um, back in the day, you had to spend programming time to extract that information from those databases by saying, go to this file, or not even that, go to this part of the drive, right? The physical mm -hmm. drive, like from oh, position yeah. five, let me try to get it on the camera here. Wait, uh, there we go. Go from position five to position X. And that is, um, that is where the records for uh, the route or the airline is, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with that much structure, with that much specifics, um, then it becomes really difficult to actually try something different. Like I had mentioned earlier, like give me all the payments that are, um, you know, due, right? Right. And that's where it's like, okay, then, then, then that's where, okay, so we're not going to try to spend millions of people time because it's in the end, it's people. How right. do we, how do we then explain to the computer what we want? Let the computer figure out how to do that in its own optimized way. Mm -hmm. And then we can get back just the results that we're looking for, like exactly customer name, payment amount, payment due date, uh, paid yes or no. Right? right. And where we could say, here's what I'm looking for, the outcome of the results. Here's the path I want you to take, right? Mm -hmm. The structure. And then here is the conditions that I want to return. And then right. the whole magic is supposed to be able to take that text, that language and translate it into actual executable code, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, um, maybe in the in one of the uh, earlier live streams that I, I I put together, I think I had uh, I talked about. I think at some point I did or didn't. I talked about the SQL. I'm trying to scrub through this. It's it's hard. I mean, I, I <laughs> I'm supposed to come more prepared for this sort of thing, but <laughs> as a professor of this sort of stuff, I'm just <laughs> I just end up just cutting off the cuff, and that's okay. That's no big deal. Um, but, you know, let's go to maps.google.com and we'll zoom out here. There are probably infinite amount of routes to go from L.A. to New York. Right. It, yeah. it, it is almost incalculable, <laughs> right? How many good routes would you take to go from L.A. to New York, right? How many routes mm -hmm. would you want to take? What route would you want to take to avoid uh, the snow? Or what right. route would you want to take to avoid uh, big mountains? Or what route do you want to take to avoid um, uh, rain or hurricanes or whatever? So there's there's different paths you would take. And that is the mm -hmm. structure that you apply to the language, right? Right. And that's, and that's why when I, was, um, when I was working with you on site, a lot, and I, I don't know if anybody, uh, many people appreciate there we go. We've got a we've got a reconnection. <laughs> and so yep, YouTube. We're back. Sorry. Uh, we're back. We're back. The inter internet kind of hicks, hicks up uh, sometimes. But uh, anyway, so the the whole the whole background on on what path route to take. You know, when I was on site and I would be listening, or even over the phone or in a meeting, um, I'm actually taking a lot of the previous experience that I've had with you. Uh, mm -hmm. about your company and about your background and what you're doing and what, what's important to you, what's not important to you. And that is influencing the route that I would take. Kind of like how I, I right. would know that my wife uh, doesn't appreciate the heat, right? So I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't go initially all the way through Texas on my way to New York, right? Uh, mm -hmm. She might want to take a route through Colorado, right? So we'll right. talk about that and say, like, okay, that's, that, is, that is actually the much better route to take instead of uh, spending – going across Texas. Not, no, not that we don't love Texas. Texas is great. Um, but, um, my wife doesn't like the heat. <laughs> so, but right. you know, living in California, you kind of go to, you have to go through some hot spot to get to the other side of the, the country, but you get, you yep. get my, my intent. So a lot of that is I'm actually listening and then translating the, uh, implied intent into the outcome. So mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of SQL development is just knowing, um, Maybe the specifics of what you're looking for, but then maybe the imp the unimplied specifics of what being what's needed, mm, right? Because mm -hmm. everyone everyone seems Definitely. to know what they want to see, and then yep. they want to know what they want to restrict, 
mm-hmm. but they don't necessarily know the path. And I think that's what we're going to be teaching the most is the yeah. different paths you can take to get the same result and realize that there's there's yeah there's there's more than one way to skin that cat. Don't let my <laughs> yeah. cat hear that. Poor cat. Um, <laughs> but anyway, let's let's dive into some sequel. Did that did that did that make some sense? Did that kind of explain a little more about what we're dealing with and how we're I think uh, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you have any questions? I... No, not yet. Okay, let's 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 dive into it. So I'll minimize this. I'll actually close this. We're now. Ah, oh, I got logged out. Of course. That's okay. Let me log back in. Do you like my my comically large cursor? <laughs> I love it so much. I, now I can see it. Now you can see it. <laughs> we were joking because uh, Alexa had mentioned to me that um, the the cursor, some of the highlighting, I did in Zoom because we're actually doing this over Zoom. You know, we're not. She's not here with me, um, but. Um, you know, some of the highlighting didn't didn't come through in the live stream, so we're gonna try to do this, do it with this comically large uh, cursor. Uh, and I'm probably gonna turn that off because I can't <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> anyway, so we we just locked into Fishbowl. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time about Fishbowl, but for anybody who's list, uh, watching this live stream who wants to learn sequel, sequel, I do honestly recommend um, downloading Fishbowl and give it a go. There's there's a 14 day trial. Um, I have not cleared this with Fishbowl. Uh, I'm sure they're not going to appreciate me just sending a bunch of people to their website uh, for the two subscribers that I have. But uh, for anybody who's new, who's trying to learn SQL on their own, uh, it's kind of hard to just get examples that are not contrived too much, even though this is a, da- a demo database, but a mm-hmm. de- demo database of a real software, a real system. So I, I do recommend grabbing uh, a copy of Fishbowl just to try the 14 day trial um, just to learn a little more. And even then I'll show you how to maybe, uh, write some SQL, uh, outside of it, but you know, kind of like, it's no fun just owning a car. <laughs> you got to drive it. <laughs> right. Uh, fishbowl, fishbowl is great as a system and a platform to run your business. Um, but, uh, that's, that's anyway, well, like I said, this is a SQL live stream. This is not a talking about fishbowl live stream. Right. We'll have that some other time. <laughs> uh, anyway, so if you've got Fishbowl loaded, you've got Fishbowl installed, um, let me show you where you can start your SQL journey, right? Um, when you log in, you're typically going to log into the dashboard, right? And Or the home screen, right? You've got this whole thing going on. And they've got this little report button here, right? So let's go navigate over there. And we'll pull up a report. Let's pull up a sales order report because that's easy to use, sales order report. Oops, not that one. Sales order summary. And uh, okay, cool. All right, we've got we've got sales orders, we've got numbers, we've got dates. Like, what what more could you ask for, right? And um, but w- maybe you want something different. Maybe you want something more specific than this or than that. Well, you click on modify report. You maybe look at some of the options here. Maybe you find the show so details, and then you want to you know, use the, use the data here, right? So, and I know you've done this before, Alexa, right? Oh, yeah. What happens <laughs> when we're going to save it? Let's, let me, hold on, let me just uh, switch, because I don't want to sh- disclose too many things on my, uh, this is my personal uh, work laptop. Uh, oops, 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 oops. There we go. Test, export. And we'll export this as, as XLS, and that's not too special. To export that and then we'll give it an open. There we go. There we go. So then you get this. Well, well what, the, what, and this is cool and all, but. But is it? It is, it is it, right? It's like, <laughs> it's visually yeah. the same thing, but. Right. I can, so many people have tried to do like, okay, now I want to do slice and dice. Right? right, and oh it's a gosh. pain, right? It's such a pain. I've it, tried. It's it's a pain. I don't recommend it. Anybody that tries to do it is, and oh gosh, darn it! And like, then you regret it. Then you there's re- page headers. There's page headers. Like, oh. you yeah. Just go, you just go like, oh, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a mood. Yep, it's and gonna take just, way longer to fix than it's worth. Because what you probably want to do is just like, I just want to do a pivot table, you know, yep. 
I, I just just give me some give me something to work with. And and to be honest, this is kind of the same thing in in QuickBooks, QuickBooks Desktop at least. Uh, hmm. Even online, I've, I've used some of their reports online. Um, it, it's kind of hard, you know. At the end of the day, and people make macros. I'm talking about yeah. programming uh, macros for this sort of thing. It's it's like I said, it's a mood. Uh, I hate it. I don't like it. I wish it was different, but uh, Fishbowl didn't write their report engine, what I call the legacy report engine. And mm -hmm. uh, so don't expect anything more than just that out of it. Yes, you can save this as, uh, you know, for for example, CSV, right? And that's an alt, that's also an option. Yeah. People can try that. It's just not, not as fun. It, it yeah. really, it really isn't. Um, so at, at the end of the day, this is what you're going to be working with. This is all you can expect. It, it got the formatting right. It looks really great. Uh, it's, it's just, like I said, you can, you can do things to make this a bit easier, like, uh, formatting for a single page and, uh, mm -hmm. this or that. But it, again, it's not the same. It's because it's trying to render the reporting engine that it's using. It's trying to render this for, to make it exactly how it's seen. Cause it, to be honest, they don't, they don't know any different. Right. You know, it doesn't know how else to how else to do it, and um, that's all. Man, that's all we can deal with. Now, yeah. what do we want to do? How do we start approaching this with just SQL? Right. So uh, I wish Fishable would talk about this more, but there is a whole data module. If you go to reporting data, right, we can start writing some SQL. So I, I talk to a lot of companies who are uh, new to the Fishbowl platform, or even they've been on Fishbowl for a while, and they go like, "Oh man, I hate the reports, and you know this and that." And and, and it, I understand their complaints and you know things like that. But then I go to the data module, and there's nothing there. I'm like, "Oh man, yeah. you're missing out. Right. Was, this, this, this is a whole <laughs> playground. It of, is of fun. It's not that exciting. I mean, look at this. It's not at all exciting." But well, it can be made to be exciting and I was say, appreciate it, it a bit more. It's a bit bland. It's not exciting to the eye, but it's if you know what's behind eye. it, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we're dealing with, right? So the data module is essentially a place where you can write, preview, and save queries, right? It's mm -hmm. probably not the most maintained module in Fishbowl because yeah. I actually prefer to have more like user rights around queries. Mm -hmm. Uh, they kind of think of it as like, well, if you want SQL, then you're probably a power user, and we don't want to, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time there, right? Mm -hmm. um, I I disagree. I think power users and near power users would like this more, and even uh, accounting teams or non-accounting teams would appreciate access to the raw SQL data. Maybe not that they would be able to write mm -hmm. their own SQL on their own, no. but that they would at least be able to run certain um, queries on their own and maybe make them into, um, you know, module, kind of like how you have it in the sales order module. Let's go pop over there real quick. Or you can run a report, you know, like this. Right. Right. And be able to run, oh, give me the, the table data for this particular, you know, setting, you know, this mm -hmm. particular uh, context. So mm -hmm. that's where... That's where we can make that work. But anyway, let's go. Let's go back over to the data. So we're gonna make. A, we're gonna make a new query, and we're gonna just try something easy. Try something straightforward. And so those of you watching at home, just follow along. We're gonna try the first word of SQL, which is called select. Right. Um, there's a lot of reasons why we're using the word select. Um, it's a. Uh, it's an algebraic term. Right. Even I'm gonna get it wrong. I'm not an academic here, um, mm -hmm. but there's a specific uh, reason why we're using the word select, um, and we'll get the we'll get to the other terms as well. But we're gonna just just follow along. Don't don't even don't even think about it. Just just uh, just type it out. So we're gonna do select star from sales order, and now my comically large cursor is just making it difficult to be precise. This cracks me up still. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're gonna we're, over here we're gonna see the tri the green triangle button. Also known as universally the play button. I was gonna say it's my play button. It's your play button, and we're gonna we're gonna see the output, right? And and in just in a few seconds, we've already got some data. Probably a, yeah. a, this will probably satisfy a lot of people just by getting a lot of raw data. Now, if you're yeah. a, a pretty large company, um, it 
probably would be too much data for you to handle at once because we only are dealing with like maybe 52 rows. It's down here in the corner behind my uh, behind my <laughs> face on the, on the live stream here. But it tells you I've got 52 rows of yep. data. And if you're a large established company, you did this. Well, your fish will climb might crash. I'm sorry. You know, you've got a million rows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, th that's not designed for this. You're, we need to get you to the more advanced section. So just, want, right. just wait. For everyone else that's got a smaller company and this doesn't, and you've got 100,000 rows, eh, you're probably fine. Anyway, so what, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the raw database table for the sales order and specifically right. the sales order header. Right. And mm -hmm. I say the sales order header because there's 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 a structure to things. Right. Right. If we stop over to the sales order. What I what I mean about the sales order header header is everything basically but the lines. Mm -hmm. Right. That means the customer reference, the date schedule, the sales order number, the address information, everything that happens at least once for mm -hmm. a sales. Order, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Something that happens multiple times. I call them the lines or the detail. Okay. Right. And that's just learning the nomenclature of this kind of world. Right. Right. Um, and let's go on a, go for more, more for that. So we've got, you know, the contact, the phone, email, category, all that sort of stuff, the note. Right. Right. Um, now, there's some things that are not part of the header, but they may appear so, like the memo or uh -huh. now custom fields. Right. right? And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those in a bit, but we'll, we'll skip those for now. Going back to the the general tab, or maybe just the header reference, we'll we'll let's go pick on this 1023 and see if we can find it, right? Okay. So we'll go back to the data module and we'll look for the number field number. So let's scroll here. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Was it 1023? Right yep. 1023. Boom. Oh, there's the note, right? Wedding yep. event. Be early. Wedding event. We saw that, right? <laughs> you picked a good one. I picked a good one. <laughs> picked a wedding. So waiting went be early, right? So now yep. this is where this is where when I was learning SQL or learning how to um, how to apply my skills, it's like, okay, this isn't magic, guys. It's it really it really isn't. At the end of the day, uh, my wedding was magical, but at the end of the day, it just took hard work, right? Yeah. It took a lot of hard work and structure and process, and that is what you're seeing here with the database and the structure of the data, is that yes, it feels magical to have tons of sales orders and the information not getting lost, but what it, really that means is what the database is providing a whole lot of structure to you and maintaining it, mm -hmm. right? You don't see it yet, and we'll talk about it in more advanced uh, 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 episodes, but it's encouraging uh, data to be accurate, right? Yeah. A number field is going to be a number field. A text field is going to be a text field. That text field could be unique and not duplicate others, mm -hmm. right? Uh, number uh, decimal fields can be decimal fields, um, and um, that's really it. Oh, you can't have maybe customer references that don't exist. Oh yeah. There's 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 that kind of enforcement of structure, right? Right. So now when we're looking at this particular row, right? We've got what, what do we got? We got the phone number. Oh, we've got the ship to address. That's cool. We've got some checkbox true false things. We've got some price numbers here. We've got URL username, and then our um, handy dandy custom fields <laughs> over there. Yep. Right. <sighs> Any questions so far? No. What did you learn? What did I learn? That there is a lot of information just from this one particular table. So I can only imagine how much data is actually being stored. Right. In Fishbowl. Yep. I mean, and let's talk about that too. Let's 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 uh, let's kind of pull back out instead of looking at a single table. Let's take a look at you know, all the tables. You notice that there's a tables tab here? Yeah. Within Fishbowl? Let's go click in there. Okay. I'm going to scroll. And I'm scrolling. And I'm scrolling some more. I don't think more. we're even halfway we're yet. We're not even halfway there. I'm still scrolling. <laughs> I'm scrolling pretty, pretty slow, though. Yeah. Let's be honest. But, I mean, look at all that stuff. There's so many different tables. And then views. It's a whole other oh ball gosh. of wax. And, that, and, and don't be overwhelmed. Right. Yeah. No. Um, this is. And, and I think the best way of looking at it is, or thinking about it is, look, take a look at your house, right? Yep. Uh, you know, no one ever thinks about it this way, but uh, think about it every every square foot of your house, and not even just that, every square inch of your house. And there's a lot of square inches, right? Oh yeah. Now think about it in terms of cubic feet, 
or cubic inches, right? Because mm-hmm. everyone buys a house or rents a rents a place with a uh, number of square feet in the in the floor plan, right? Right. But no one really ever thinks about the vertical space necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, so, hey, Very true. Stuff's stuff's 3d you know yep <laughs> i could have a five foot <laughs> ceiling and it just be, feels so claustrophobic oh my gosh a ton of space but then i could have a smaller space but then you know go 20 feet high right some yeah. of the loft apartments in new york oh yeah um and it feels a bit a way differently with something like that and um databases are similar right and nobody gets overwhelmed going to their house unless they got to go do like a you know kunmari <laughs> <laughs> they got to purge what's going on in their house but yep. um but every square inch is almost addressable right and right. same thing with fishbowl like everything that we're trying to do for your for the business and for the data that's happening in the business needs a needs a spot needs a home you know a mm-hmm. cubby hole right to to go into and right. without that then we're really just you know imagine imagine just uh trying to run a business and <laughs> this is the this is one of the funny stories i heard uh many years ago uh, a grad student was working with a professor and the professor's like, okay, well, I'm going to hire you to be an assistant and we've got a database and I need you to maintain the database. I'm like, he's like, great. I've got experience with databases. I've, I, I learned, I, le- I know SQL and I can do it. And when is it, when is it happening? It's like, okay, he's hired. He's now ready to, to start working on the database. And the professor st- dumps a stack of paper and says like, that's the <laughs> database. I need you to maintain all the records that I put into it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and what it was <laughs> what it was was just a bunch of papers of maybe the sales order summary, you know, right? right? That would that would get maintained by manually retyping the 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 page with the new data that got provided. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they, they 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 mimic they they mimicked the result of what a database could do in terms of storing and recording data, but didn't kind of miss the idea that it's like you know we're doing this on a medium that can be uh, updated and, and stored differently and uh, has right. outputs that are different. And can you imagine getting right. a bunch of sales order paper, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, I remember remember uh, not going another story. I remember before your company got Fishbowl how they mm-hmm. process orders off of a DOS ah. system. And because yep. the DOS system wasn't really that modern, I mean, it, it, it had a very simple database in the end. Right. It, it served its purpose. It served its purpose, but you actually managed your operations on paper. Oh, yeah. Remember those days? Yeah, that was the the job you're talking about, that guy. Yeah, that was... The, I remember spending hours with paper. Hours. With paper, so you can <laughs> so so you can appreciate how like the difference between people like kind of like don't get overwhelmed like in, at the end of the day like it's not that much overwhelming than what you would see on a piece of paper, right? You know, so back to the data module. So we, we we've got you know things like and be be appreciative. Um, uh, did I close? Hold on, I gotta switch. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat up on a database <laughs> here because I can. And uh, we'll talk about this uh, database, Great Plains, which which I sunk my teeth into. I've got a lot of good memories of learning how to do SQL, mm-hmm. but it was a it was a bear. It yeah, was, it was definitely um, not fun, but I didn't care. It was like my big my first big boy job, right? right? And um, it was it was I, I was glad to have the opportunity, right? So this uh, this this uh, this uh, woman. Uh, put together this website, and I've used it quite a, uh, quite a number of times when I've done some consulting. We've done this kind of sort of thing this year as well, helping mm-hmm. a customer migrate from Dynamics GP over to Fishbowl. Mm. But uh, let's take a look at a purchase order table, right? And you'd have a table name called POP10100. Oh, gosh. I can't imagine having to memorize those numbers to remember what it goes to to know what, what to, to do. write. <laughs> yeah. yep. Oh, my gosh. Yep. I would constantly have that pulled up on the side like, uh, and, OK, what's that number? Yeah. And it, it, and it made it and it made it not fun. Right. It really, yeah. ma- really made it really difficult. Um, so when we look at something like Fishbowl, even for as verb- I would say verbose, but at least 
the words mean something a bit more, like vendor, yeah. is the vendor record, right? So we'll double click on right. that and we'll get a little pop up and we'll get a little preview of what the vendor data looks like. Hmm. Right? So once you kind of like follow along, it's like, okay, we've got a vendor name. And then I can see that we've got an ID number, like this right. unique reference, right? Then mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can start to make sense of the world a little bit more and, and put this together. Um, some of the ways that I learned how to uh, understand the fishbowl structure of the database, it, it, it's, and it's not, it's not available inside of fishbowl necessarily, mm -hmm. but it is available th through other tools. If you use uh, maybe some SQL uh, database tools that are third party or, or commercial or open source, where they actually tell you the relationship to the vendor data, or let's go to the sales letter, the find, there we go, customer ID. Mm -hmm. But this 37 means that there is a 37 in the customer table ID field, and that that would that would mean this Mountaineer catering. Gotcha. Okay. Right? So if we, yeah. let's go. Let's go validate that. Let's go. Let's do some exploring. A lot of yeah. a lot of a lot of understanding the Fishbowl database is just exploring what's a, what's there already. Right. I know because I've been in this database for far too long. Oop, that's company mm -hmm. customer. And what what did we say the thirty thirty seven? Is mountaineering? Yep. Okay, so ID thirty seven. Scroll over to the right. Mountaineer catering. There it is. Right. Again, you build the trust of like what if I go from this place to that place and get that link together, mm -hmm. right? Then I can access more information about maybe the status of the customer or the currency of the customer or you know, what have you. Maybe we have mm -hmm. custom fields that represent a customer market, oh, I don't know, customer market segment. Right. Right. And we'll, we'll get to more of that advanced stuff uh, a bit later, depending on how quickly we can kind of go through uh, teaching teaching you SQL. Right? Yep. But anyway, let's let's talk about um, the syntax, right? Or let's go, now that we're, we're kind of, what we're using this language for. Um, we, can, we don't have to query everything. In fact, we can only ask the database to give us exactly what we want. And in fact, the database is much happier to, to, for you to give it only what you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it is not a happy camper when you're asking to just give me the whole everything. Right. That may be what we are looking for for exploratory reasons, but, ne but that is not efficient for a database at all. Right. You know, uh, imagine if we had to, in order to get, in order to load the single sales order report, we had to load all customer information. Gosh, that would take forever. You know, well, it, w it would take forever. <laughs> in, in, but if, not If really. you were slow. Yeah, if yeah. you were slow. Yeah, if you had yeah. slow computer, slow resources, yeah, it would take yeah. forever. But it's just a lot of information to go through for one. For one thing. Yeah, of yeah. course. So what I'm doing is I'm doing some little formatting here. And SQL, it will understand the white spaces, the tabs, and things like that. So it's not like Python or some other programming languages where the tabs and spaces matter. It really doesn't, right. as long as the, okay. the, 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 the structure is, is, is sound, it will accept it, right? Right. So instead of the star, which we had earlier, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch over to just typing out the column names, right? Okay. We can see the column names here, and yep. we, can, we can pull a few out. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna pull out number. Right. right. And uh, hit control, I hit control enter, that's the shortcut key for uh, the data module. And now uh -huh. I've got all the numbers. Okay. Right. I can also uh, reference this a little more specifically, right? Because SQL, knowing that we're dealing with humans, will kind of help and uh -huh. say like, okay, I know you mean the number field in the sales order table because that's the only thing we're talking about. Right. Right. But if we're working with information from multiple places, then uh -huh. it's going to need a little more help because you could have column names that are in both tables at once. So the way that we right. try to be more specific is that we do... We prefix that with a the place that we're looking for. So sales order right. and then a dot. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't change the result or doesn't change the outcome here necessarily. It just right. it it takes the text and translates it to what it, the same thing anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. We can also do some magic where we say, you know what? I don't want it to be called the number. I want mm -hmm. it to be called the sales order number. Okay. So then we're going to give it an alias, right? So I use the keyword right. as because I'm uh -huh. I like that. Uh, you could do other things. You'll yep. eventually down the path you'll learn shorthand. Uh -huh. But 
it's not really relevant now. So, and it's important for us to be aware that we can't just type in sales order number. If we do that, we get an error. Right. Right. It doesn't know what you mean. Why? Because it's expecting that the spaces and things like that have meaning. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Right? So when we're dealing with something like that, you either decide that you're going to do it as a one contiguous uh, block of wor uh, letters, right? right? And now you've got that. Mm -hmm. Or f the style that we do, we use underscores. Yeah. Right. Now, if you try to use, uh, let's say, a period there, it's going to get all confused because it's, you know, kind of like when you're yep. trying to tell SO dot, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. It, there's there's certain syntax that again it's not worth it to kind of go through all the permutations here, but sometimes right. you'll have to understand that you you'll there, there are certain things that it won't like, and there are limitations. And there and you'll yeah exactly there are limitations you'll learn them. Yeah. Um It's not a, it's not that important now. No one's gonna. No, no one's gonna <laughs> fall apart if we don't know them now. But I just figured it was worth mentioning. Yep. <laughs> You're good. You're good. But there's also in this particular database, which we're using, uh, Fishbowl uses MySQL. I, I kind of forgot about the, to mention that, but Fishbowl uses MySQL. Okay. And uh, MySQL has its own structure and syntax, and we'll we'll stick with the MySQL world for now. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a there's a structure to say I want a literal uh, 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 alias, right? Uh -huh. And you can use the back tick, which is this character on your keyboard you can't see it alexa but it's above the, the top tab. left the top left on the tab yeah where the curly cue is too yep. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the curly cue and then and then the you can start specifying a little more and maybe even put a space you see that okay 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 yeah yeah i i get it again okay. some people want to get the, the 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 casing and the spaces in the column name right i don't agree with it because we have other ways of displaying information to a user. Right? Mm -hmm. it, you know, to somebody using this in Excel, because we're going to start exporting this to Excel pretty soon, uh, they, they probably don't care. It'll, it'll be fine, if, even yeah. if it's a bit long, right? Right. So I'll go to my style. I'll go sales order underscore number, right? Yep. That's my style. Okay, well, great. Israel, we've got one field. <laughs> you know, pack it up. Can do so much done. with this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're just mailing it, mailing it in at this point, right? Yep. Um, so let's do a bit more, right? Um, let's get the maybe the ship to name. So so dot ship to name, right? The reason why I typed that out is I've I know from experience, but you don't have to know. You can just go to sales order, open up that table, and just peruse some of the names, right? Right. And I know sales ship to name is right there, easy, mm -hmm. no big deal. Yep. Right. So then I go back to general. I maybe give this another alias. And there we go. Ta da! Right? A couple things that I glossed over until now. See how I put a comma there? Yep. It's very, that's very important. That's how the system knows that you're talking about something else. Right. Like that's how it's like the period. Yeah. For 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 syntax in, in like the English language. In so, the sentence, right. So the so the these um these uh what's the word? Uh, the, yeah, just the, the punctuation here does matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe not as much, but a little, a little more, a uh, little more than, than normal. Right. So that's mm -hmm. how we, we indicate what's going on. Yeah. Um, great. We've got, an, we've got some words. Great. Fantastic. That's, that's awesome. Let's mm -hmm. add another comma and continue. So we're going to add in the sales order, maybe total price. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we have to learn a little more about fishbowl structure. Right. Um, Fishbowl, the software, the database, the server, you know, that that is that is actually what's interacting between the screen here. Right. Your Fishbowl client mm -hmm. and the the database itself, which is storing your information. Right. So right. a lot of it is going through the logic and business rules that the Fishbowl server or system or software is doing. Mm -hmm. And that is ultimately what's driving most of this. Right. So this right. sales order total price, while useful, you should not do too many assumptions with that information, right? Mm -hmm. It is not, for example, it'd be wrong of you to assume that that's the amount of the order that has been shipped. Right. 
right? That is just the amount that Fishbowl has decided to put there to indicate that this order total is just this. Right. Right. And I don't think it includes the tax. That uh, was going to be my next question. <laughs> Does yep. it include tax? Yep, exactly. <laughs> so now we start getting into the more nuance of your business. So for, for a business that doesn't do sales tax, maybe they're just B2B only or manufacturing, tax yeah. doesn't matter. Right. right. But tax does matter for a lot of retail businesses, even mm -hmm. more so now that we've got most companies are going online distribution themselves. So yep. uh, they've got Shopify stores or, or eBay stores or Amazon stores, and they're now dealing with tax. Right. Right. So there's a field called total tax. Right. And we'll take a look at that. And well, OK, we do. Right. Yeah. So let's let's take one with the largest sales order tax, uh, 1018 there. Okay. Let's pop over to, it's not open. Oops. And let's go find it. There it is. All right. So you can see what it's doing here. We've got the tax of 6563. Yep. And a total of 11563. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's take a look at how that worked in terms of the data module. Mm -hmm. 11563, okay. 6563. So it does include tax. Perfect. All right. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. Yep. You good? Okay. But you know, you get the you get the idea, right? Yeah. So so now, you go ahead. Uh, oh, I was just gonna say the order that you list these um, columns that we're selecting, right up above in your select, it the order that you list them will be the order they appear left to right down below. Mo yes, most of the time, yes. Yeah, okay. actually, all the time, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's so what if, I thought. So if, so if I change this here to this here, then that's what happens. Perfect. There, there might be some other things that might happen um, in your tools, your other platforms. Like if you put this in Power BI, it might mm -hmm. put new columns, even though you put it in the middle of the results to the bottom mm. of okay. its list of available yep. fields. But that's kind of just – the database itself is actually sending faithfully – the exact columns because I don't know. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to go there. That's just too yeah. much technical part. Don't worry <laughs> about it. It's just says like, Hey, you asked me for these things in this order. I'm going to give it to you. In right. These things in this order. Right. That works for me. That's a good answer. Yeah. I, I don't want to get too technical. Yeah. There's no point. No. Um, and for some companies, this could be totally usable. Right. But you can understand how this, this as a business person, you, you've got your MBA, right? Yeah. Uh, this isn't that helpful, mm -hmm. right? Why isn't it helpful? It's like, well, I don't know if these orders are open or not. Like, I don't know other information. I don't, like, I've got 52 sales orders here. Like, I need a little more nuance. Right. Right. Maybe I need a date. Maybe I need a status, right? Mm -hmm. So let's let's maybe add some dates, right? Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull over this sales order date completed. Okay. Field. And, they, and it, it is called just exactly that, sales order date completed. So when you go sales order date completed, as SO date completed, super easy, right? Nice. Now we have date completed. Okay. Now this is where we start getting into it's like, okay, this is part part SQL training, but also part fishbowl training, right? Mm -hmm. Why are some of these not ha do not have values? Right. Right. And that, let me talk about one thing before we move on to the next thing. It's, I don't have an example here. Um, just hold on a tick. Let me do the technical difficulty screen. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I've got here on on camera uh, a box, right? And Alexa, you can't really see this, so I, I apologize. But I'll it, close a, my eyes and visualize. It's a it's a it's a it's a business card holder. Okay, right? I have one of those. Right, and there's no business cards in it. So how many business cards are in the business cards ho card holder if there's none in there? Zero. Right. Okay. Trick any, question. Any? No. It's almost a trick <laughs> question. Not yet. Yeah. If you put one business card in here, right? There's now one business card. Uh huh. Right? 
But if there's no business card, right? And there's and there's and oh, sorry, I, I should have done this a bit differently. I apologize. But if the box didn't exist, right. I have an empty hand. Uh-huh. How many business cards do I have? Well, if you still have your one business card, you have one. No, no, see, <laughs> but you might not. You might not. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm presenting you an empty container. Uh huh. Right. That doesn't mean I don't have a business card. Right. Right. And that's the difference is between um, having a field with zero. Mm-hmm. Versus a field with empty. Right. Zero is not the same thing as empty. Right. Empty right. means there's more to the story. There's more, maybe, maybe because we've not completed that sales order. Right. Right. So therefore, there is no completed date. And this trips up a lot of businesses and a lot of programmers and a lot of people. Like they mm-hmm. got to they gotta think like, okay, uh, it's not that I ran out of gas. It's just that I don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> right I, I don't know yeah. well, some of these analogies kind of run flat but you get the idea right and, yes. I, and I and I try to work these in as, as I as I felt it's almost like a comedy routine <laughs> some of them go flat some of them go well yeah you know yeah hey, but you, you, know. you get the idea so there might be a very good reason why it's empty yep right there might be a very good reason why somebody is not in the employees table because mm-hmm. they're not hired yet right right there might be a good reason why there is no start date again because they're not hired yet Right. Right. So if we go to that sales order 1007, um, let's go take a look at it in Fishbowl. Ah, well, I, I can tell you right now because it's in progress. Yep. It is not done yet. Only part of it has right. been fulfilled. Yep. So when you're, when you've had your MBA class, right, you've gone through uh, managerial and financial accounting, right? <laughs> yeah. Remember those classes? Yeah. You in those classes, you've never worked with data that that almost didn't exist yet. No. Right. It was either mm-hmm. in the ledger, or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a black or white thing. Accounting. Right. Yeah. So when a lot of businesses are coming coming to the Fishbowl platform and trying to get what they're looking for, they they kind of forget that Fishbowl is allows the company to have shades of gray. Right. Just like how. Mm-hmm. You have a brake pedal. It's not on or off. As much right. as the people that I feel like maybe think that it's an on Some or off. Some people drive that way. <laughs> it's, it is it is 10% brake, 1% brake, 25% right. brake, 100% brake, panic brake. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, there's different there's different uh, pressure levels, right? Or different mm-hmm. – there's a nuance there, right? And it, yep. and it causes a different kind of uh, experience. Same thing with Fishbowl, right? It's a different mm-hmm. shades of gray. Mm-hmm. Accounting is very black or white. So before the order's done, there are, I guess, expectations or behaviors, really, that the system is going to apply on its own as you're using it. And that's ultimately why computers can't answer the question that well. Like, if you imagine, oh, gosh, I didn't even think about this. People that are listening to this on their computer. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, Alexa. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my whole opening line. I totally forgot about it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It's no big deal. Sorry, guys. You better turn off your Alexa for, hey, the next, hey, hey, for Alexa, this season. <laughs> hey, Alexa, stop listening. <laughs> but, but you know, people have this expect. I, I remember this, what, the scene in, like, Star Trek, one of the movies where it's like, hey, computer. And they had the mouse. I was like, hey, computer, <laughs> do this. Yeah. Um, that's why computers can't really understand that well the intent behind it. Because, yes, com- people wrote the software for computers to store, to do everything we're asking for computers to do, right? Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that the translation and the intent is natively understood everywhere. Yep. You know, everyone talks about AI, but it's going to take a while for people to understand, to, for one person's ideas to be available to something else mm-hmm. to know that hey, day completed is only done when you're only available when you're done with it. Right. You can try as hard as you might, but it mm-hmm. we're so long ways to go. So that's why you can't like, like uh, you can't talk to SQL just by, by talking about it. If it, if no one really knows what the context is behind mm-hmm. it. Anyway, let's go back to the SQL, the actual SQL language. 
and let us do our first condition. Mm-hmm. Right? Maybe we want things that are already completed. Right. Okay. Right? So how do we do that? Well, what we do was use the next keyword called where. Where. And we will give it the column name, and then we will give it a condition, and then a, a conditional, and then we'll give it a value to match against. Right? Mm-hmm. So um, the probably the thing that maybe people get kind of tripped up on is like, you know, you kind of have to think about it in a certain way, just like a Japanese, the, the verb comes at the end. Right. Right. Um, you have to kind of approach SQL. It's like it's its own language, so kind of get the grammatical structure a bit better. Yeah. Right? That's why when I was when I was working with you, and I, I'd be translating th- into the SQL as you talked. Right. Right. Yeah, it makes me think of working in Excel and writing the functions. And right. Right. Those things. Yeah. So we're gonna give it the column name, what we're matching against, and then we're gonna pr- give it our conditional and the value. In this case, we have to type out a, a special word called is not null. Mm, okay. Right. So another way of calling that is, is not empty. Right. Null considered empty. Yeah. We'll run it. And now instead of 52 rows, now we have 42 rows. Mm-hmm. You see that? So yep. that, that is now we're informing the database like, hey, by the way, when you come to a field, the state completed field, and it's empty, I don't want it. Right. I don't need it. don't want it. Keep not paying attention to this right, right. now. <laughs> and now it only display the set of results that I'm looking for. Yep. Right. And now we're going to go one step further. Right. We're going to want to get the word of in progress into this column. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you go to the table structure, you'll probably notice that there is a, I'll see if you can find it in here. Because these columns are typical. Sometimes they're they are alphabetical. Sometimes they're not. There it is. There it is. There it yep. Is. There's something called a status ID. Right. Right. Now let's go pull that. Whoops. Comma. Go. Yay. Wow. Not that helpful. Right, unless you know what those mean. Unless you know what they mean. Well, you, and you can know what they mean. Fishbowl right. is very nice and uh, created these set of tables called, I, I call them reference tables or lookup tables, right? Uh huh. So there is a sales order or SO status table. Okay. Right. They're, yeah. we're, they're doing this specifically because storing numbers is much more efficient than storing copies of the oh, same yeah. text. Yeah. Right. I mean, hard drives are very big, very cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh, not even so, storage is very, very fast and very cheap. But even then, if we're if we don't need to spend the, the time, energy, or, or or resources to store the word historical, mm-hmm. then let's not do that. You right. Know, let's store something easy for a, um, a computer to, to handle, which is just you know numbers. And mm-hmm. yet, the words are numbers anyway. Um, and then that way, that way it can process and crunch, crunch it way faster. Right. Right. Not saying that it, that you can't do it with, um, you know, with text, but mm-hmm. it is, it is a much, it is much more difficult to maybe copy or update the meaning of status 60. Right. If you had to go back and update a million rows from completed to shipped or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. Yeah. But again, we're working with people, right? And in the end, mm-hmm. people are not going to understand that 60 means this, and we're not going to give them a cheat sheet along with the report. Right. Right? Right. So this this doesn't – no good. This doesn't work. Uh-huh. So what we're going to have to do is uh, translate that information into human – into text. Yep. Ultimately, right? The business the, the business person, I mean, in case, this case you, right, uh, doesn't care how we do it. It really mm-hmm. doesn't care. We could – I could think of five different ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it the most, the way that is most ap- applicable to the fishbowl way. Mm-hmm. Right? And what that means is that we're going to make a join. Okay. And rather than talking about it, I'm just going to do it and then talk about it and kind of get some of the the uh, theory behind it. And I think probably that's enough for today. We were already been yeah. on the live stream for a while. Right. Um, 
the, the first live stream was two hours, so I, I don't want to be here the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got some other meetings to attend to, so we'll, yep. we'll probably end it after that. Okay, sounds good. I think that's a good place to stop. So what or I'm going to do is start using this new word called join. Join. We're going to look at our new table called SO status, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to give it some structure, some conditions, right? Okay. Join the sales order status ID where it equals to the sales order status dot ID field. Okay. Okay. Right? This is where we're taking the two tables and finding where they match. Exactly. Finding where they match. Okay. And that's a, and, and the, the database knows that those those are already referenced together in order mm -hmm. to enforce that we don't have like a status one hundred. Right. Because the status one hundred doesn't exist mm -hmm. in the other table. And it says like, that's not a valid record. Like that's not right. a valid value. You can't use that. Ah. Right. So yep. now we're gonna be able to now we will be able to access information in the sales order status table. Mm -hmm. And again, why I use the table prefix is now why I have to do this. Right. So now I can say sales order status dot name. Right. Mm hmm. See that. Mm hmm. Run that. And boom, now the database, now my results are starting to make more sense. Gotcha. Right? And that, then I can kind of hide that bad boy. I was just going to ask if we could just get rid of that line and display that instead. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if I'm playing through the results and things like that, you'll want to learn some more, you know, shortcuts and, hand, and, and, and easier ways of doing it. Right? So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is kind of comment out this line. And then with a double dashes in a space. Yep. And then run it again. And now we can see kind of everything that's going on in, in the system. Ah, right? okay. We've got the estimates are there. The issued yeah. ones are here. The in progress are here. Then the es estimates down here, closed shorts down there. This yep. is, now we're cooking with gas. Yep. Right? And if I were to hit the export button here, mm -hmm. let me do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, test, export. SQL query. We uh, switch the stream output. I hit the export button, and I'm going to. Oops, of course I forgot the extension. <laughs> Let me open that that in Excel. And now I've got my results in Excel. There it is. Right, and there might be some formatting th you have to do. Um, you have to. Uh, ch this is the the um, Excel oh, date format. Date. So we still need to convert that, so I'll change that to short date. Yep. Right, and maybe I'll do this to dollars. Yep. Right, and then what I'll do is like, okay, we've we've got some pretty good data, right? Yeah. Now let's start pivoting. Okay, here we go. You want right. you want you wanted pivoting? You got pivoting. So what I prefer to do is I'll do the um, I'll do the format as table. Yep. Because I personally like that. You've seen me do that many times. Before. I. That's my go-to. And then I'll summarize <laughs> the pivot table here. Yep. And this is not, for some reason, because I've got this in a, a, the old Excel format, it's not giving me the fancy dancy kind of like Excel structure, but that's okay. Um, I'll do status name there, and then yep. I'll do total price. There you go. Huzzah. Now I can see, oh my gosh, I have $685 that I closed short. What's going on, man? Right. Yeah. Right. And, there, and, then, and from here, I can't, I think, if you've been, you you know, Alexa's been with us a, a couple of days now, uh, more than a couple of days now, but you've, you've had that experience where we're kind of doing something like this and it's going faster. I'm not, I'm not sitting down and explaining things. I'm just kind of listening to a business owner and we're kind of just sussing out the needs and the requirements and things like that. And we kind of go from, okay, I heard everything you're looking for, kind of like a judge. And yep. here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this, this, and this. So the next 30 minutes, just watch, right? Yep. And we go through the process of querying the database, maybe maybe adding some custom fields and and so on and so forth. And then we extract the data and then we go into something like Excel and we do a real quick pivot. Yep. And it's like all of a sudden the 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 dirty painting that we thought was worthless becomes like a beautiful Picasso. Right. Like it was just covered in a bunch of ash. And that ash yeah. was just our um, inexperience with SQL. And not having tried. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the sort of thing that I think a lot of companies don't realize that they've they've got a database, they've got some really good data, and we're we're using we're just using the 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 demo database here. But yep. imagine if you got uh, a company with a few years of history. There's there's a lot of insight there that people aren't really accessing, uh, maybe as well as they could. Right. And they could do a really good job if they uh, either had somebody uh, internally or they work with someone like us to access that information and work with it. Oh, yeah. Right. No, it would be a very powerful tool. So, Alexa, what are what are some things you'd like to learn in the next session? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know that I have a, a full answer. I just like that we're, I mean, continuing to work toward um, producing something that we can analyze. Uh, I don't know. I might need to to review that a little bit further. It, that's not a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you kind of, the, kind of the different things we'll, we'll, we'll probably start taking. I think I've given you enough, enough, um, given the, the audience enough, you know, ammunition to get themselves dangerous. Oh yeah. Right? Uh, Definitely. You, you have to understand like, even if you write a bad query or, uh, in a, in a inefficient query or slow query or whatever, there's no real penalty. Just close your client and reload yeah. it. There, there, you can't break it. Right. Honestly. And if you do, congrats. Like it's hard for, <laughs> it's hard for me to break the system. Nice work. Which is with just SQL. So <laughs> But you know, you you kinda have to break some eggs in order to make an omelet, right? Right, right. So don't worry about it. Try it out. Um and what we'll probably be talking about is 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 some of the more I wouldn't say more intermediate SQL. We'll probably go towards some more of the more basic stuff, explain a little more about why we're doing it. Uh, anytime you have I have a question, just just ask it. It's super helpful because I'll go through and talk, talk, talk. But you know, having someone ask me a question will make me think about how to how to answer it. Oh yeah. And uh, if anybody that watches this uh, soon, we'll we don't have a schedule set up. Honestly, uh, my my work and travel schedule changes quite a bit, so we'll try to keep this you know at least twice a month ish. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we'll take questions from the audience. We'll take input and ideas from anywhere we can find it just so that we're you know everyone's enjoying themselves everyone's learning something new and exciting uh, on the official platform and we all can learn uh something new yeah awesome well that's it from here at the studio ilc hope to see you guys at the next uh live stream and oh uh, some more housekeeping we've got um a fishbowl release um in fact We'll probably do a catch-up show on the fishbowl releases. Um, last one was this uh, eight thirteen or so, which I wasn't around. I was, um, I think I was busy that day, so we missed a couple. Twenty twenty point seven <laughs> six. Yeah, we've missed three releases. <laughs> missed a few. Yeah. Missed a few. <laughs> um, so we'll probably have a live stream on twenty twenty point nine, which is uh, next week. Uh, on next my week birthday. Thursday, on your birthday, <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll be talking a little bit more fishbowl. So that'll be uh, something for the fishbowl audience as we as we kind of get back into the groove of uh, our uh, our streaming efforts. But anyway, um, hope to catch you next time. Stay safe out there, and uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye.